Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another GVN review. I'm your host, Tia, and I have with me again from the Kindy Nerdy Girls Network, Jana. What's up? <laughs> What's up, peeps? I am so happy to have you back. We talked um, Who Killed Sarah, season two. So good. Uh, so, um, you know, we were searching for another show to watch, and you told me that you watched the Netflix show Cursed. And I was very excited about that because I believe it came out last year. And I did a lot of the coverage for it, like with some of the actors and, you know, screeners and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, oh, my God, someone is talking about Cursed and this is exciting. New fans are coming and hopefully Netflix will see this and uh, renew it for a second season. And then it was announced that Netflix canceled the show. It is hard to be a fan of things, isn't it? It is so it's honestly the most difficult thing is to be a fan right now of anything <laughs> honestly <laughs> i mean it's kind of i know i bring this up a lot but you know i was devastated when they uh canceled american gods and the yeah. thing i hate the most is when you google american gods the first things are canceled 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 so now when i was searching curse to bring up the wikipedia so at least i had it in front of me of course the thing uh curse canceled by netflix there will be no second season and i it's just it's sad it's so sad. <laughs> it is sad. I mean, um, I kind of can get why they can't. I mean, I can kind of get why they canceled it like a little bit, but I mean, it was they still had some, uh, they could have told more stories. Yeah. So, I mean, just as like a quick recap for those who maybe don't know about the show, it was a 2020 show. Um, you know, it premiered on Netflix July 17th. So, yeah, literally uh, like a year ago. And it's based on the illustrated novel of the same name by Frank Miller and Tom Wheeler. So it was like an, a, a young adult show that kind of reimagined the you know whole story of King Arthur and the sword and everything. But it was like, well, what if a girl had, you know, what if a, a queen had gotten it beforehand? And as you said, John, I think there's a lot of story to still be told, which we'll get to, but... Um, the whole thing, at least in my perception, was that it wasn't saying that, you know, King Arthur is never going to get the sword. It's that mm -hmm. she wielded it beforehand because they very much alluded towards the end that she was going to become, I think it was called something like the Lady of the Lake or something like that. So it wasn't that like Arthur was never going to get the sword, but um, just walk me through i mean what made you first want to watch the show and what were your like general thoughts after watching the season because you said you had a lot of questions <laughs> i did i had so many oh like i because i finished it right before i went on vacation okay. and i was like oh my god i was like what what kind of ending was that like it i well i was just scrolling through netflix one night because i i don't know i'd finished watching something or i wanted to watch something new and I was like, oh, I was like, curse. And it's got Catherine Langford in it, which love her. Yeah. From um, 13 Reasons Why. Yep. Saw her in 13 Reasons. I only watched like the first two or three seasons of that show. I only watched the first season. So you got more on me. <laughs> honestly, good. Because season two was, that was rough. That was <laughs> well, rough for season. me, and, and not to go too far out, but with 13 yeah. Reasons Why, I thought it was like, okay, you went through the 13 Reasons. Like that's done that's cut <laughs> then it yeah. was like no let's make four seasons out of this <laughs> yeah i was just like mm, okay but she was um, good she's very good she was she was so good as hannah baker um you know she's also in um knives out knives out with my boy chris evans you know um oh how's chris i know i keep interrupting right now but how's yeah. christmas going it's going good um i actually when i'm done <laughs> on here with you i was supposed to watch puncture yesterday but I had to work last night, so I didn't get a chance to watch it. So I'm going to watch it tonight because it's free on IMDb right now. So I was like, ooh, I want to watch that. Um, oh, I need to post. I actually need to post in our Facebook group what movie we're supposed to be watching tonight because I haven't done that yet. <laughs> I've been really slacking on it. This like We were supposed to start on Monday and I actually didn't start till Tuesday. Uh, I was like, hey, guys. I'm, KJ was like, it's fine. I was like, hey. <laughs> um, Christmas is going very well. Um, so... Uh, well, I was just scrolling through and I was like, oh, 
like I'll figure out something to watch and then I saw Catherine Langford and I was like okay and then I was like oh like you know I like I don't know why I just like stuff that has to do with King Arthur like not that I care about King Arthur at all because like I don't but like I just find the story so interesting and every time they do like another retelling of it I just like learn a little bit more about it and I'm like okay like I can I can feel this um so then I like I started watching it and I was like okay so this girl's got some special powers and she's like a fairy type thing or something like that like I didn't really know like what she was yeah and then I was just like oh and then like I mean it escalated so quickly Mm -hmm. it really did it was like oh look this is so nice they're living in this nice mystical sort of world and oh shit the catholic church oh shit crazy (laughs) demon oh shit (laughs) yes oh my god oh I meant to oh I meant to text you but I like like after it happened I, like it's something else good. happened so like <laughs> when I was at PopCon over the past weekend I saw this guy walking around and I was like he had like the red like tears under his eyes and I was like oh my god and so I was like, he oh, was the that weeping guy? monk I was like, that guy's the weeping monk <laughs> <laughs> oh my god can I tell you that when Cursed first came out everyone was like fawning over the weeping monk i mean like, at, i mean at me though because yeah. like same i was like okay <laughs> that i mean i know this is like skipping ahead but i guess it's like not a traditional review since it's been out a year and everything it's just canceled but i thought it was kind of cool that they withheld that he was lancelot at the end like that's another reason why i was like oh i would have loved if you could have gotten the second season because you could have you know went into that more but yeah the Weeping Monk was really cool. I honestly, so you were uh, drawn to it because of Catherine Langford. I was drawn to it because Gustav Skarsgård was playing Merlin. And so like, for those who don't know, it's there, there's more than just Alexander and Bill Skarsgård. They have this, there's you know, so under many Skarsgård. There's so many Skarsgård, but the underappreciated brother is uh, Gustav Skarsgård, which you guys may know as Floki from the show Vikings. Um, so he plays Merlin in Cursed, and that was what first uh, drew me to it. So I really liked that whole thing. But anyway, sorry. Uh, what were your thoughts about like cursed as you were i know you said it escalated quickly but well because it was just like okay everything's great we kind of sort of live in harmony like even though those pe- like the people were bullying nimway because she had like these special abilities or whatever and i was like oh i mean you know you get that with any you know small town that you live in yeah <laughs> they're like oh you have a, a weird toe yeah <laughs> banished <laughs> oh are you different sorry um and then you're just like, okay, this is fine. And then all of a sudden it's, all right, red paladins, these dudes who have like freaking awful bowl cuts with freaking crosses like burned in the back yeah, of their that was head. The one thing about, that was the one thing about Weeping Monk. It's like, okay, all good, you know, all good. And then he like turned around like, ah, cause he had the, you know, the yeah. weird thing. I was like, put that hood back on, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can't grow that put it like man bun up or something like that cover that (laughs) yeah and it just was I mean it was just like so insane and then like you know she meets Arthur which Arthur that guy Mm -hmm. girl okay I was like ooh, okay I see you with Arthur and then like it just I I can't even there's like so many things that happened in the show where me as like a 21st century woman was like what (laughs) yeah and I was like oh I mean I I get it I get it whatever I thought the most painful scene for me to watch not even gonna lie when Nimue's mom like this is like way far into the season but when Nimue's mom was taking the sword out of Merlin I felt (laughs) I felt that so hard I was like ah I was like that hurts me and it's not even happening to me my thing was like so I mean I, I love the setting of Cursed. Uh, I, I don't know if you know this, Jonna, but I go to the Renaissance Fair every year. So I'm like a I huge... I would believe that. I'm a huge like Renaissance Fair type person, but I'm then not a very, say, fairy, mystical, like fantasy world fan, if that makes sense. So to me, it was like, I'm always looking for the realism 
So when she's like pulling a sword out of him, like, how does he stand? Is it like full, you know, how is he like, like my mind was like, how did it get in there at first? You know, Because like, that sword is huge. And it's like, I know that Merlin or Gustav Skarsgård's a tall guy, but I'm like, how? So, yeah. you know, that, that was a little strange to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I, when it's a show that's like about magic, mystical stuff, I don't even question anything that happens in the show. I learned just, that. <laughs> yeah. Don't, if there's magic, don't ever question it. Cause like there's always going to be some weird reason why mm-hmm. it, it's a thing. Like it's like a 10 foot sword coming out of the six foot guy, but you know. Yeah. It's, whatever. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I just loved, I mean, Catherine Langford did such a good job at being yeah. Nimue. I mean, I kind of felt like a, a couple of times it was a little hard for her to hold the accent that she was, that she was having. I felt to, felt she was struggling just a smidge. Well, because that accent. was my thing was that I was confused because I'm like, well, she is Australian though. Like I had always thought that she was American and she was putting that on. But apparently she wasn't putting that on. <laughs> I mean, literally everyone who we think is American is like English or Australian. <laughs> like, I just like I'll never get over when I, someone was like, oh, yeah, Idris Elba is English. What? I was what like that mean? when they were like Tom Holland. And I was like, no yes. way. Peter oh Parker. <laughs> His American accent is so fantastic. Oh, my God. At this point, I was really surprised that Chris Evans turned out to be American. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I was because I mean, some people I mean, some people you can tell by like how hard they seem to be trying to do like Benedict accent. Cumberbatch. Yeah, he does seem to like. I mean, his accent's like good, but like you can see him like kind of struggle to like hold it in. And and that's no shade. I really like Benedict Cumberbatch as an actor. Like that's no shade to him. It's just when he plays Doctor Strange, I'm just like, just make him British. (laughs) Yeah, honestly, it's just like Tom Hardy. Like I love Tom Hardy, but like, but he can't hold it. He cannot do that. In Venom, that, Eddie, that accent. Ugh. When they uh, did when they did the trailer for Venom, I was just like, I was how, like how can I, how can I, def- how can I defend Tom Hardy? It's like honestly, <laughs> that act, oh it was awful. Oh, the accent was so terrible. But I mean, like, I I don't know. I just curse was really good. There was like a few like really sad. I felt so bad for Pim. Oh my god, Pim, I felt really, really sad for her. But I mean, she did kind of like end up making out like good. I mean, she was on this awesome like Viking ship with like a badass female leader and like yeah. the guy who clearly liked her and everything. And I'm like, Pim is kind of doing all right. She's kind of yeah. living her best life right now. <laughs> I felt so bad though, because her, I mean, the guy who she was, you know, crushing on or whatever, spoilers, um. dies. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, no, he can't die. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing about Curse is it's a young adult, like, show, because it was based on a young adult novel. Mm-hmm. But there were some things in there that was really difficult to watch. I mean, the way that the Red Paladins would just so easily grab someone and, like, throw them up on a stake. And then they had that one girl who they were like, she's Nimue. And she wasn't Nimue. And they're, like, yeah. burning her alive. And I'm just like, oh, my God god um it was like really hard to watch and you know sometimes i watch those things and i'm like why does it have to be the church (laughs) like as as like a as a catholic i sit there and i go you guys suck (laughs) (laughs) i know well the church is just an easy target and i mean like the church i mean like back in those times the church ran everything no no no. and that's what i'm saying you know you sit back and you sit there and it's like yeah they're saying it in like this whole mystical thing but you know that actually happened and you're like oh yeah that's right oh sorry kind of based on real events is basically yeah. What it is. <laughs> but yeah i mean i i really enjoyed the story of say nimue and everything did you feel at some points like i was with her right i was with her you know she she was hurt as a child and the village that she was in didn't like her but did you get the sense that as she kept going that the sword was corrupting her just as Merlin said it was. Oh yeah. 100 percent I, I mean was there like, was at some point where she was she was getting scary and it's like put the sword down Nimue. Put the yeah, sword down. Honestly, I was like go ahead and give that sword to Arthur Nimue. <laughs> like just let it like because I mean she can't she couldn't even really like wield it 
you know yeah. like arthur he's just breezing with that bad I boy know. and i was like it's meant for you arthur it's <laughs> for you <laughs> oh my god though when he took it i was like arthur i feel betrayed I <laughs> You, you bastard what are you doing <laughs> i know i was like oh no he took it and then like that whole like where they're like saving the people like the where she's in the convent or whatever and like his sister has like this whole like escape plan like already yeah. like set up for just in case something happens and like and i felt so bad god uh, how bad did i feel for her like yeah. just I mean, like, she's a woman of color who's also a lesbian yeah. in a convent. <laughs> it's like <laughs> everything stacked against her. And I felt really bad when, you know, me, sometimes I feel like I'm so naive when it's like, why don't you go with her, you know? And they're, they're saying their goodbyes and it's like, oh, they're never going to see each other. It, you know, it, it was so sad to think about that. But I really ended up, I think her name was Morgan, right? Um if I'm correct here. Yeah, Morgana. Sorry, Morgana Close was enough. the sister. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I really liked her, but her, um, you know, she, her like story became super interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, I have to say that I love the character of like the widow, you know, and the fact mm -hmm. that at some point Merlin was just having like a beer with the widow and i just thought that was hilarious because it it reminded me almost of the story in comic books of say lady death and like thanos and everything and it almost felt like but more on a platonic level but yeah. then i thought it was super crazy that morgana became the widow at the end yeah. i was like oh shit when she like uh, did the veil and i was like oh damn <laughs> She was like, I killed her and I became her. I was like, you killed the widow? <laughs> How is that how, possible? How did you do that? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And then like she, but like she took being the widow as, oh, I'm not going to kill Merlin. I'm not going to kill Nimue, even though Nimue sort of died at the end. But not yeah, really like sort of. <laughs> she just like fell in the water and I'm like, I'm sure, I'm sure she can swim. I again I took it as that was like say the first season of cursed was going to show that and then it was going to have at the end Nimue become the lady of the lake because I'm pretty sure when I was doing my research like in fairy tale folklore that's who Nimue is so then that would leave the sword there and then you could go into the more traditional sir arthur with the sword that's how i felt it was gonna go um of course netflix decided that we shouldn't get any sort of explanation with that so you know that sucked um but what was i gonna say yeah i mean um i thought that there was a lot of like really great parts but some confusing parts as well um how much did you absolutely hate that one nun at the convent who was just like all oh. so so simping for the red palatins oh even though they said like prior to that no woman like women couldn't be red palatins and it's like i never understand why like you would want to be in a group that d doesn't even like what you are and she's just like no 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 like fairy phase and witches and this you all suck i'm gonna be a red palatin yeah. I hated her. Yeah, she's like trying. Oh my god, I hated her the most. I wish she would have died at the end. Honestly. Didn't she remind you a little bit of like Pensatucky from Our Just a New Black? Like she could have been yes. a knockoff of her. Yes, I want. I get that one hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> she just like when. Well, okay, let me back up. So when I first met, when they were at the thing with the where they were at the convent mm -hmm. and all the red paladins are like, oh, everyone report to the witch and call it. And then she's just like standing there, like looking around, like she's like, "Where's that new girl at?" And I was like, "Can you shut the fuck? yeah?" It's like, like, "Can you literally be quiet?" It's like, "What business is it of yours? Sit down, please." Right. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Like he goes somewhere, and then she burns down the freaking convent, I like know. with everyone in it. Because wasn't that the thing? That's I how Morgana's like girlfriend died because she was, it, which mm -hmm. is like way to do it off screen it's like oh she's right. dead <laughs> she's yeah dead. <laughs> but i mean then that scene where they're in that like cave or whatever and her like basically her ghost like comes up to morgana and is like oh babe you got this and like that whole spider scene oh, my God. oh. I, 
God. I don't want to say I have like arachnophobia because it's not like that deep, but I hate bugs in general. So that scene showed up and I was just like, no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, this is uh, too stressful. I don't like it. No. <laughs> um, and then like, she just like made, okay. And this, this is just me. And I don't know if it bother, would bother anyone else, but she literally was in the same space as Nimue and Morgana like in the freaking Fay Town, I forgot what they called it. Uh, Nima, I... Nimas, Nimas, something like that. Sounds like Nemo, I think, is what it was. <laughs> I think it was Nimas. But like, she literally was in the same, and it's not like it's a big space. Yeah. Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> that, <laughs> my boyfriend had his phone, and all of a sudden, it just like did Google Fi and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Polly I say hi. <laughs> Donna says hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> but like they're in the same like small space, city space, and mm-hmm. they didn't see her at all. Yeah, I mean it was definitely like a suspended reality and everything. <laughs> um, it's definitely like <laughs> suspended reality with that, where it's like, as you said, anytime it has to do with like magic, you're like, just go with it there's magic yeah. and that just explains things you know yeah. so it's like it's not like as if the show didn't have its little like loop like plot holes and everything like that um what did you think about the reveal of merlin being Nimwain's dad i was like surprised but like not at the same time because like i was kind of like well i mean because i mean if like merlin's a wizard or whatever or yeah. merlin the magician or whatever he is he's magical or whatever and he just somehow has this super magical connection with nimway's mom yeah. and i'm like well in my uh you know my readings of things the only time you can ever get like a magical connection with someone in like the magic world is either you're related to them or you had sex with them yeah <laughs> so like uh I know he didn't give birth to her mother, so <laughs> <laughs> so it had to be that he was the dad. Yeah, yeah. And then her mom just like take this to Merlin, take this sword to Merlin. Like, why Merlin of all people? Yeah. Like, what I didn't, I didn't like understand at first when she was like take it to Merlin. Like at first when she said that, I thought like maybe it's just because Merlin was this like great wizard and everything. But it seemed as if people didn't necessarily like Merlin at this point because he decided to then be you know at the service of the king which it's kind of hilarious that merlin so if you think about right wasn't the whole thing he lost his powers when he you know like the sword was out of him right and that and that was prior to nimue being born and Mm -hmm. she's like at least what like 17 at this point so that's like 17 years he hasn't had his powers the fact that he was able to uh what you calls it lie and say that he did have powers this whole time and the king was just the king, honestly to me it's like wow king how like naive are you <laughs> well, i mean that guy's not even really the king but oh, that's whatever. true oh my god the mom the oh my god mom. <laughs> the mom okay <laughs> she was not a nice woman <laughs> i was all. not but i mean but like as much as like the king the king kind of seemed like the comic relief in the story a little bit but i mean how savage at the end that he like literally like poisons his own mother well and i think i mean i think that was a good job in the shock value because the whole time you sit there and you say like this king is a weakling and as you said he's the comic relief and he's kind of pathetic because everyone's just getting one up on him and all that so then for him to have that breaking moment you're like he's not playing anymore he poisons his mom he's you know not taking Berlin shit anymore i mean that was okay i i like that progression because you know then you see how you know pushing someone to the their breaking point you know is, mm-hmm. you shouldn't do that so yeah there was that um you said you had though like so many questions and everything like that so i'm like i want us to go through the questions and i want <laughs> us to like try to try to 
get to the bottom of all these <laughs> yeah okay well one really big question is is Nimue dead that's like the real question right there but we will never know we'll never so know I but w- I I always assume and I don't want to sound like a broken record but I think she did technically die but mm-hmm. then she's just going to then come back to life yes. as the lady of the lake like Makes I sense. think that's that's what it was it was trying to show this was almost her phoenix moment as you said we'll never really know for sure so the only thing we can have is our assumptions and the folklore that all of this is based off of yeah and then merlin just all of a sudden just wielding the shit out of the sword didn't it remind you of thor a little bit yeah <laughs> when suddenly, a little bit when suddenly you get i to me i liked it just because i really liked the i really like the actor and i like the character and the whole time i i wanted to see him have power so you know i expected that they were going to cut the scene where he doesn't grab the sword and the whole time i'm like i felt as if how people watch football right where i'm like grab the sword grab the freaking sword and he finally grabs it and his eyes go and all of a sudden lightning comes and i'm like is that a Merlin thing or a Thor thing? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on who came first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the Merlin or the Thor, who came first? We don't know. Um, and I mean, you know, Arthur, like what, you know, what's happening with him and, you know, Morgana, you know, because she's the widow now. Yeah. So like, and then the the girl who burned down the convent, because I can't remember her name to save my life, but she's pretty sure still alive. Well, yeah, I think they, Merlin killed her. No, they made her a, a red paladin. At the remember, yes, they did make her. Yes, I remember yeah. that they did make her a red paladin. You remember in the red paladins, then they had these other group, like a subgroup within them that all wore like a gold mask or something like that. Yeah. Then they gave that to her. It was almost as if they were like, "We're letting women in now, but you just got to cover your face." Yeah, we just like, can't yeah, see. and you have to wear like a giant hood, so no one will really ever know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm but trying. I mean, like, she got her dream, you know. But like now, you know, where are the red paladins, you know, gonna do now? You know, if Merlin's wielding the sword and Nimue becomes the Lady of the Lake, and you know, what are they? What's the weep? What's Lancelot gonna do? Because that man was riding a horse with a child, and he oh, definitely yeah. was dying. So that- like that's right with the child with horns or something like that right uh with squirrel whatever squirrel yeah squirrel, yeah by the way yeah. the the nun who then became mm-hmm. uh you know a paladin it was sister iris iris i expect her to have a much more bitchier name like i yeah. don't know why i just want her to be named karen or something <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness definitely Uh, i i forgot that the whole thing was that they called nimue the wolf blood witch witch. (laughs) for some reason i kept saying like the fairy queen and i was like that's wrong like that's wrong john (laughs) like i knew it was wrong but it sounded right in my head the wolf blood witch the wolf blood witch it's it's kind of a lot to say (laughs) and they said it with so much like the wolf blood witch will get her. And I'm like, y'all, y'all don't have like acronyms you can use or something like that. Like you can't just call her Nimue. Like you know right? her name. So but we're going to go get Nimue. Right. Like, I mean, come on now. Guys. There can't be a lot of Nimues out there. I'm just saying. She's got to literally be the only one. She has to be the only one. Oh my God. I know this is jumping around, but that scene where she was trying to get into that one village and they and she had to like pretend that the old dude next oh to her my. was and they literally took her. oh my I god like, i don't know i might have given up the the whole grift at that point <laughs> tia when i tell you that was like that was like right in the beginning yeah that wasn't a later episode that was like right there i want to say episode two almost how stressed i was and <laughs> that guy was like oh just pull your tooth out right now and i was like yeah. So, I was like, oh, it don't hurt that bad. But I, th- I thought that something was going to happen in that moment where then they were going to say, oh, no, let her in. Or, oh, we need you here for something. I didn't know. Literally, it was going to just yank that freaking tooth out. Right out. And this is back before, you know, numbing and, you know, all of that great stuff. So he just pulled out a perfectly healthy tooth. Right. right out of the funny thing, mouth. though, is 
uh, obviously it was in the back of her mouth, but I'm picturing in my head how funny it would have been if it was like one of the front teeth. And so then oh. Nim <laughs> went the whole show. Just you know, I don't know why. Just, oh my gosh. It was just freaking that scene was insane. And I, I'll tell you that one scene, she's with Arthur and he's like, I don't know. She like almost drowns or something like that. And he like pulls her out of the river or whatever. And he's like laying her on the bank and he's like, no, wait, wake up, wake up. And my dumb ass is like, give her CPR. And then I'm like, wait, you can't because um, y'all don't know what CPR is yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't invented CPR you haven't yet. Invented CPR yet. So you just got to like hope that she's People actually just drowned wake back up. then. <laughs> I was literally like, I was like, what are you doing, Arthur? She's going to die. Give her CPR. And I was like, wait a minute. It's funny. So in in the show, we obviously have, obviously Nimue and Arthur get together and there's some, there's some scenes with them, but it's, it's fairly tame, which is funny because again, I had just watched The Witcher at that point, half expecting that they were going to have these like really uh you know graphic scenes and i was like oh that's right it's the young adults but i mean they clearly had chemistry what did what did you think of the nimue and arthur relationship i i don't know like i i guess like i knew that they had chemistry but i feel like they didn't they didn't build it up enough Hmm. for me personally as a person who reads uh and watches hella romantic things (laughs) <laughs> like you gotta you have to really like build that relationship right. with someone and I kind of felt like they I mean besides the fact that they're just you know fighting side by side all the time I'm like when do you guys ever just sit down and have like a legitimate like conversation you know, talk you know but like they're just always constantly like oh we have to save Nemos we have to save this person we have to do this we have to do that and they're never like actually like doing like I don't know It was just weird. And then I knew, I knew they were going to sleep together when she was like, I'm going to give myself to the red paladins. And I was like, oh, so he's definitely going to sleep with her because Uh, she's never coming back. Like, it's obvious that's what's going to (laughs) happen. I, um, you know, so I know that, I don't know how old Catherine Langford is, uh, should probably look that up. She's Um, like 20 something. She's 25. Okay. But what the only oh, she's like the same age as me. <laughs> uh, sh- you guys are young. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't feel young. it. <laughs> wait, wait till you're 31. <laughs> <laughs> but what you call it? Like, I still think of her from 13 Reasons Why, right? Where she's playing a teenager. And then the guy who plays Arthur, obviously very good looking but looks obviously older than her. So in a way I did get creeped out a few times. Again, I know she's a grown adult, but because I'm so used to her being in this like high school setting, I was just like, yeah. oh, 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 oh. But you know, yeah. you just have to, I guess, push that out of your head. But yeah, you knew that they were going to sleep together. You knew it was happening. Yeah. They were like, yeah. why would we have our, you know, two main characters not sleep with each other <laughs> on their last night together. On their last like, night together, it is a little it, cliche. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I definitely thought like after like they had like came back together and like she was like, "Oh, you stole my sword," and blah blah blah. And after they had that whole like bout or whatever, I was like, "Oh, well, then they're definitely gonna get together." But man, those freaking red paladins was just really blocking. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, did you want to like absolutely slap the shit out of Arthur's? I forget, is it his like uncle or stepdad or I something hate, like hated that? that guy. Oh his, my it was his god. uncle, I think. And I you, hated that guy. You thought like at well, at least me, I thought at some point maybe he'd turn around and say, you know, I changed my perception, you know, I'm an old man, and I've been wrong and everything. It's like, no, he just continued being a son of a bitch. <laughs> Well, I mean, there were like some points in the show where you could kind of see where his mind is like, okay, maybe, maybe. And then like the whole, like he, like after he saw like Arthur with the sword and all of that, he was like, okay, like I'll sponsor you for the thing. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, well, you know, now I can't sponsor you because you stole the sword. I'm like, bruh, how much stuff have you stolen in your life? It's like, it's it's the medieval ages. Like, are you kidding me? Everybody's stealing. You, you, you're uh, drawing the line at that. I don't believe that. You're beheading people left and right. Like, 
And I mean, that guy had ample opportunity to like pay off Arthur's dad's debts for Mm -hmm. him, like to be a good uncle and pay off the debts for him. And then, you know, Arthur could then be like some high person in society, but no, you can't be mad because you didn't help. Like Arthur can't help that his dad died. And then he's like some freaking, I don't even know how old he was and his dad died, but like some young kid and he's got like thousands of dollars in debt. It's like you couldn't have helped. And it's like, I felt so bad for his wife because she was so beautiful and she Mm -hmm. was so kind. And I'm like, how the hell did you end up with this crusty ass looking old bitter man? But you know, it's back in the day. So honestly, you know, people were paired with each other and forced to marry because in no world would she have chosen that man. (laughs) Oh no, not even a little bit. Hell no. Not even a little bit. (laughs) But I, I did, I really enjoyed the show. Like I, I, I don't know what I thought that it was going to be, but it definitely exceeded all expectations. I mean, the freaking the CGI was so good and, you know, the like CGI was really decent for the show. And uh, we talked about this before we hit record. I'm not going to like sit here and compare too, too much, but there were some questionable, questionable CGI in the Witcher. Um, yeah. And for me, I'm like, well, that must have been a much bigger project than Curse. So for Curse to have had better CGI, I mean, I just really enjoyed uh, the scenery and the costumes and everything. So I really like that. So my question is, if we had gotten a season two, what would you have liked? Um, I definitely would want to see what happens with Merlin and the sword. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Cause like him and Morgana just disappear off of that bridge at the end, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, didn't he like? What's pull it? And he was just like, again, another Thor thing. He essentially like opened the Bifrost and like shouted out to Hemdall, like, come on. <laughs> yep, I was like, uh, okay, that's cool. And like, I want to see Morgana as you know the widow. Like, what is she? How is she gonna you know change it up as the widow if she can do something like that? I don't know. And then, you know, Sister Iris as, you know, one of the Red Paladins, like, you know, see if the Red Paladins get any worse. And then Arthur, like, see him finally get the sword because, you know, that's all that's all we ever want is for Arthur to get the yeah. sword. Yeah, <laughs> like, as you said, it's, it's not like, uh, you know, I'm some huge King Arthur purist or something, but that, you know, that's the story, you know, and it's, it's epic and all that. And you want to see him wield the sword really quick. Side note, as I said before, I'm a big like fan of the Renaissance Fair. And at the Renaissance Fair that I go to, they have a little thing with the sword and a stone. You can take a picture and you're like, you know, as you're trying to like pull it out. (laughs) (laughs) If you guys come to New York in between the months of uh, August to October, we can go to the Ren Fair. (laughs) Ooh, I might. I have a, I have some have a like fall break or something around that time usually at work so you know you can come come to the river maybe, maybe. <laughs> i want to go to new york so bad i've always pl- tried to go but i can't ever, i don't ever have any money <laughs> i mean it's okay i have like no money ever to do things so it's like uh that was the one thing when uh kj and patrick were like you can come to popcon and i'm like how do i get there <laughs> <laughs> i yep, guess i could drive. i felt that 100 percent. but uh, like, that's a long drive yeah i think it was about like five hours or something I really five six yeah. hours i don't know with the way i drive <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i i want to say i agree with you if we had gotten a second season i would have definitely wanted to see more merlin with the sword um i would have liked to see more <laughs> background of merlin because we had that one scene where it was like looking very god of war ish and he was Mm -hmm. slaying people left and right i'm like okay i needed more than just a two second scene there um i would have wanted to see what happened to nimue like how would the narrative of the show had shift because we followed nimue as the main character in season one you know would it then have shifted to her being the lady of the lake or then would it have been okay now it's arthur's moment here um so that would have been interesting and obviously sister iris morgana i mean they're you know i i'm not gonna sit there and say um did you ever watch by the way the marvel netflix shows like luke cage and everything like that 
Mm-mm. Okay. I was going to say, because Luke Cage ended on like the biggest cliffhanger ever. And it was so utterly frustrating that it was canceled. So I'm, what I'm saying is like, Curse wasn't canceled with say like that much of a huge cliffhanger. Yeah. But it still would have been nice to explore more. So I would have loved a second season of Curse. I was sitting here waiting for it. I'm like, why is it taking Netflix so long? Which should have been my first indication that Netflix wasn't going to renew it. But I was still being foolish enough and holding out hope. So um, yeah, I I definitely want to see more Weeping Monk, though. But not as the Weeping Monk, as like Lancelot. Yeah, and, and hopefully he like grows his hair back in that spot and so. everything because that i mean if it's burned do you think it'll like his hair will grow right there that's another thing it probably won't so he's just gonna have to rock the the man bun all man the time bun. or like because... just keep the hoods on all the just time the... yeah that was the thing when honestly they're... like sorry go ahead. i think like you're fine it's i think that like most like because every girl and i will say every girl because i i know a lot of women and every girl loves a bad boy oh yeah i love them Mm -hmm. so like half of the appeal of the freaking weeping monk is that he's just like this you know skulking like just walking and that you know low whisper talk you're just like damn yeah okay i get it (laughs) whatever i get you and you're just like damn like you know like every girl loves a bad sad boy and then at the end you find out that he's fae you're like what yeah when he was like he's fey as well it's like everyone's fey no one is not fey here exactly. everyone <laughs> is a fey <laughs> yeah i was it, like how can he track them so well like and that was the thing is that i i didn't look it up but i don't think in folklore like lancelot was ever fey so that was something they totally added for the show but i was just like I mean, they could have just had where he just decided, like, hey, killing children, no matter if they're human or fey, is a really terrible thing. I should probably stop this. And it's like, no, it has to be yeah. that he's fey. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to see, like, where that switch was, like, that, I mean, you could kind of see it, like, when he, like, ran into a squirrel or whatever in the, in the like, the first couple episodes. Yeah. And he just, like, let him go free. I was Which- just like... Yeah, it, did. it was like, what was so special about Squirrel? Because it isn't yeah. as if Weeping Monk hasn't slaughtered innocents before. So yeah, that mm-hmm. was interesting. That would have been nice to continue to explore. Um, but unfortunately, we'll never know. I doubt that Netflix will, you know, change their mind or anything. They're pretty uh, adamant when they cancel these shows. So that is just about plus come get me <laughs> <laughs> i know i always sit there and go like like with american gods i'm like can someone just save amazon prime paramount someone yeah, but i mean sometimes when the shows get saved they're you know they're not as good as they were when they were on a certain streaming service or on a certain network can i say this really quick before we wrap up everything today there was this show on amc a few years ago called the killing and it had three seasons on AMC and then mm-hmm. it got canceled. And then Netflix said, okay, we'll pick it up for about six episodes to just wrap everything up and give an ending. That was like, I would even count that season. That season's so horrible. It, the actors don't even feel the same. The writing isn't the same, the direction, the feel. And then it's really weird because on AMC, you know, you can't curse or show like sex or anything there. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly, you know, and I'm not against cursing. I curse, but Jesus, they were dropping the F-bomb like every two seconds in the fourth season. They're like, oh, yes, now we can say fuck. Let's say it every second now. Yeah, and I, I know. just I hated it. <laughs> that's how, that's me and KJ. Uh, I just watched uh, the latest season of Lucifer that came out on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And I told her, I was like, I don't. I was like, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't really here for it. And I was like, and I'll tell you that I kind of think that the show, like, I mean, I love Tom Ellis and I love that whole yeah. cast and I love that show, but like that, it just kind of, the feel of the show t- completely changed for me. And I mean, yeah. you know, it's just like, oh, we're going to see Tom Ellis's butt in like half of the episodes. And I'm like, okay, I'm not upset about that. But like, what, what context is this bringing to yes. me? Like what? what is all of this cursing and all of these things like what is you adding this do for the show nothing it doesn't do anything it doesn't add to the plot it doesn't move the story along or anything so it just kind of 
did you think really weird did you think a little in that case because didn't i hear rumors that tom ellis was kind of just done playing lucifer so you think part of it could have been that he just wasn't enthused about the character anymore well i think that i think i read it somewhere but i'm probably misquoting it because i don't i half-ass read everything (laughs) it's Um, okay me too (laughs) but like they had said um that you know they had basically said that 5b was going to be the end of lucifer Mm -hmm. so they just kind of were like oh all right let's you know wrap it up so i think everybody was pretty much like done with the show and they're like you know what just kidding season six and it's like well shit um (laughs) it's like i've already been checked out of this thanks a lot (laughs) and now the whole crew like all the cast like they have they're you know i think they're still filming the sixth season Mm -hmm. but like the fifth season like the second half of the fifth season like it wasn't great and like the way it ended was weird but it kind of wrapped everything up so it's kind of like oh do you do you you really need to do a sixth season (laughs) yeah it seems as if they're just trying to ride that popularity and just keep going so yeah not i i I agree it's not always a good thing um i'll say i know i keep saying i'll say really quick but um i never really watched the show hannibal but i know people who were fans of the show hannibal and you know it was canceled after three seasons and then um you know, there was rumors that they might bring it back for a fourth. And one of our associates, Michael from Geek Fives Nation was like, I don't want them to bring it back for a fourth. He's like, they might just fuck it up completely. And it's like, just leave it as is. So yeah, it's it's not always the best, but I do wish we had a second season of Cursed. I'm glad though, at least you watched it. I'm like, I really didn't get a whole lot of people watching this show to talk about it with. So as soon as you said that, I'm like, I, I can dig into this again. I'll definitely rewatch <laughs> it. So I'm happy about that. But um, Jana, I always love when we get to pod together. Like it's okay. just so much fun. I have to have you and KJ and Katie on to do because Katie was very upset that I didn't have her on a top ten. So I felt bad. And <laughs> okay, well, to be fair, it was a top ten. Chris Evans and me and KJ are like the the Chris Evans experts. <laughs> so that's why i was like katie but that's why i was like i have to have you guys on because i like you literally have an event called christmas so i know would you have to watch uh puncture and let me know what you think of that because that is one of my favorite chris evans movies of all times but um why don't you let everyone know where they can find you and all that good stuff what's going on with the kind of nerdy girls and yeah (laughs) all right well if you want to uh well me personally if you want to follow me on twitter i don't really post anything except about chris evans and sometimes i tweet at tia but other than that you know i just be on there uh it's underscore it's jana underscore um if you want to follow the podcast it's at kind of nerdy girls on like every platform out there if you want to join our facebook group which is where we're doing our christmas in july where we celebrate the fantastic chris evans uh you can go to facebook and type in kind of nerdy network um and it's a facebook group and you just have to hit that you want to be in it and then one of us will let you in or not let you in we're not very selective uh (laughs) so literally anyone can join (laughs) but yep please everyone make sure that you check all of that out i just fully endorse the kind of nerdy girls and jana you are all just so fantastic. So please make sure you check them out. As for me, a uh, shameless plug here. Last year, I did get to interview some of the actors for Cursed. So I'll put the links down below for those actors. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to follow my personals, I'm on Twitter and Instagram uh, at TC underscore Stark. Please make sure that you are following the YouTube channel, Geek Fives Podcast. You're checking out geekfivesnation.com has links to all of our social media accounts we are busy 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 um and just wanting to bring so much goodness to all you guys so please let us know if you enjoyed curse and if you are upset that they canceled it before we could get a second season and jana until next time bye bye